am I the booty hole for explaining to my brother and his wife why they can't bring their rainbow baby to my wedding? My fiancé, female, and I, male, are getting married. We've decided that the wedding's going to be child-free. No hate towards children, just to keep it more organized and contained. My brother, Chris, male, and his wife, female, have a three-year-old son who everyone calls Miracle, or Rainbow Baby. He came after several failed pregnancies that lasted for years. When they found out that my nephew was included in the no-children rule, they tried to convince me to make an exception for him. Chris told me his son is a Miracle Baby, and his presence at the wedding will bring blessings for me and my fiancé. I refused and said no, the wedding is child-free. His wife kept sending my fiancé pics of my nephew when he was months old. What does that mean? I told them no and to stop. My brother told me this might cause a rift in our relationship. I again said no and explained that the wedding is child-free. He asked again and pointed out how his baby is different since he's a rainbow, a miracle baby. I again said no and explained that the wedding is child-free. They brought it up when they visited at my home, and I knew they weren't going to stop. So I made flashcards in advance with the phrase, The wedding is child-free, period, and pulled them out and started slowly showing them the flashcards one by one in this order. The wedding, with a sticker of bride and groom, is a child, with a sticker of a baby, free, with a sticker of a prohibited sign, period with a huge black dot sticker. They both were stunned. I asked if they get it now, and Chris had lost his cool. His wife had already grabbed her stuff and walked out. Chris called me a jerk for doing this, and said that I disrespected him, his wife, and their son, who's my one and only nephew. He rushed out after we argued. My fiancé saw the whole thing and thought that it was funny, but my parents and Chris are livid beyond measure. They're telling everyone about the amount of disrespect and mockery I had displayed towards them, and I'm being told to fix it now. For the most part, especially when the rules are communicated well in advance of the wedding, I'm likely to take the side of the people whose wedding it is in whether or not they are the a-holes in situations like this. So for this case, no, he is not the booty hole because they clearly stated way ahead of time that there were no children allowed at this wedding. They weren't discriminating against any child. It was all children, period, like he said multiple times. The fact that his family members just wouldn't grasp that, con that concept and assume that their kid was somehow special and could bypass this rule, that makes them entitled. So I think they're more well they're well within their rights the bride and groom to have a wedding as how they see fit they can have a wedding without kids they can have a wedding without alcohol they can have i don't know why you would want to do that but uh, they set the rules ahead of time and the people if they choose to attend the wedding they have to abide by those rules no questions asked so yeah in this case not the a-hole cameras have to be on no matter what fine by me don't mind the pump I'm a project manager and data scientist. I manage lots of different public health related projects. There's one project in particular that includes a really demanding team from a federal government department. I recently returned back to work from maternity leave. I work in my office three days a week. On those days, I have to pump breast milk at regular intervals for my baby. Luckily, I have my own private office and can usually just keep on working, emails, reports, etc., while I pump. I have a hands-free wearable pump, which is convenient, but still definitely obvious if I'm wearing it. It pokes out about my shirt and is not exactly silent. Recently, we have a Zoom call scheduled during one of the times I needed to pump. Instead of missing the meeting, I figured I would just keep my camera off so I could wear my pump and still participate and listen. Heck, I was even in my office and not working from home. I felt like I was being a pretty committed employee. Meeting starts, and a few people have their cameras off. The lead makes the announcement. I just want to remind everyone that our expectation is that you will have your cameras on because this is not a virtual meeting. It is a simulated in-person meeting, whatever that means. 
I sent a quick private message to explain I was paying attention, but pumping. No response to me. Just instead a, again, the expectation is that all cameras will be on. So, fine. I turn my camera on for this meeting of about 20 people. The camera isn't aimed at my chest, but certainly the top of my pump is clearly visible. I unmuted myself so you could also clearly hear the pump, and just said, thank you for your patience, I was adjusting my breast pump. The meeting continued awkwardly, with several other team managers letting me know privately it was fine to turn my camera off. But at that point, there really was no point in turning it off. At the most recent meeting, the announcement was, please turn on your cameras if you are comfortable doing so. I'm going to go out on a limb on this one and guess that the original poster is from a country like the United States, or at least a similar country that doesn't have the friendliest work policies for new mothers and fathers. Pumping breast milk is a difficult thing to do. It's physically taxing, it's physically draining. I mean, aside from the fact that it is physically draining fluids from your body, it's just overall exhausting. And a lot of times it doesn't even work. I mean, to get to the point where you're actually using um, a pump to gather the breast milk in the first place, uh, there's a lot that goes into that decision. Um, so the fact that she's uh, um, encountering all these workarounds and is doing her best to still fulfill her family needs while putting in the immense effort to also do that while undertaking a full-time job, that says a lot about this person. Um, but it would certainly be nice if there were more broad spread, uh, widespread broad policies in the U.S. that would prevent or um, allow families, new mothers and fathers, to handle these situations with more ease, and perhaps they wouldn't have to encounter such uh, difficult times in the first place. But one can only hope that that's where we're headed. EM demands my drink for her kid. Gets mad when she finds out I spoke the truth about it being alcoholic. Now, for a bit of context, last weekend was Liberation Day in Holland, and many cities were having festivals to celebrate. Most of these festivals have free entrance, so they tend to crack down on people bringing their own food and drinks to increase profits from beverage sales. A mate of mine lives within the area where the festival is taking place, though, so usually we drop our booze at his place and retrieve it during the festival. Since it didn't seem like a terrific idea to walk around with a bottle of JD, I mixed it into a one-liter Coca-Cola vanilla bottle with just enough Coke that it looked like Coke and went on to the festival grounds. I'm assuming everybody is familiar with the common abbreviations. JD is my good friend Jack Daniels. We've been through a lot together. While walking around with the bottle of Coke, I feel a tap on my shoulder. Festival etiquette is to move over to the side to let somebody pass, after which I move along. I suddenly feel a hand grabbing my shoulder and trying to pull me back, so I turn around and I'm faced with a typical Karen. Entitled mother, where'd you get that? Pointing at the bottle. I brought it from home. Can my kid have some? Not wanting everybody to know I had booze on me, they sell Coke over there. You can buy your kid a fresh cold one. They don't sell vanilla Coke there, and he doesn't like the regular one. He wants yours, holds out hand. If he doesn't like the regular one, I'm pretty sure he won't like this any better. Meanwhile, the kid has started squealing about how he's thirsty and wants that one, and entitled mother starts giving me a demanding stare. Okay, lady, I'm going to be honest with you. Half of this bottle is whiskey, and I don't think it's a good idea to give the kid whiskey. You're lying. You just made that up so you wouldn't have to share with my baby. Now give it to me. While I kind of shrug and turn away in an attempt to disappear into the crowd, the kid grabs the bottle with both hands, wrenches it from my hand, and makes a run for it, his mom in tow. I follow them, and I find them just in time to see the kid take a few massive swigs from the bottle, after which he starts violently throwing up almost immediately. Immediately! Figuring the best move for me would be to not further pursue the now vomit-covered bottle of Jack and Coke, I decide to head over to my mates and mix a new one. In passing, I throw the entitled mother a told ya and make my way into the crowds. Within seconds, the entitled mother charges me and starts attempting to take a swing at me. You poisoned my baby! Security! 
We are separated by bystanders, and a stall holder gets security, S, which questions both me and Entitled Mother. He gave my baby this bottle of poison and told him it was coke. I want him arrested. Sir, what's in this bottle? A premixed whiskey and coke, somewhat on the generous side with the whiskey. And why did you give it to that kid? I didn't, sir. I was mostly planning on getting smashed myself, to be fair. They thought it was coke. Wouldn't believe me when I told them it was booze and snatched the bottle from me. What you're seeing here is just the result of the kid taking a drink before I was able to stop him. At this point, a bystander chimes in, confirming that he saw the kid snatch the bottle from my hand, although he hadn't heard the conversation. Security tells the mom to not pull that stuff again, to take her still crying kid to the first aid post, and instructs me to be more careful with the next batch I'm inevitably about to make. You know, sometimes I'm surprised to learn that there are entitled mothers or Karens like this that exist in countries outside of the U.S. Um, I always thought that uh, it was a uniquely American thing, but I guess there's people like this all throughout the world, even in the Netherlands. I've been to the Netherlands once, and from what I remember, it was a very easygoing place to live. Um, I mean, you've got Amsterdam, for one, where pretty much anything goes. So the fact that they have these liberation festivals, you would think that the mother would be well accustomed to the fact that this bottle of Coke maybe didn't contain just Coke. So yes, all the blame falls on her. I think uh, she should have known better. Don't want to give me a new contract? Fine, I'll stick to the terms of the contract I do have. So, I used to work for a large retailer in the UK. I worked there for 12 years in total and ended up as a manager. When you want to become a manager, they make you fly through a thousand hoops, do a whole bunch of training, and do the job for six months without any extra pay. I did all of this and was finally officially signed off as a manager. After I was officially given a job, I got my pay raise, but was never given a new contract. I asked multiple times for a new contract and was fobbed off each time. Fast forward about nine months and another large retailer started hiring lots of managers and was poaching a whole bunch of staff. I applied for one of these jobs as they were offering £8,000 more than I was currently on, but for the same job. I got the job and went to hand in my notice. Managers have to give four weeks notice, whereas general assistants only have to give a week. So I decided that I would follow the exact terms on my contract and provide them with a week's notice rather than the four weeks they wanted. Suffice to say that they were not happy with that and I got called into an office to ask why I had only given one week's notice. I explained that per the terms of the last contract that I signed with them, that is all that I was required to give. They were really not happy, but there really wasn't anything that they could do about it. Good for this person. That's what contracts are for, so that there's no question about it one way or the other. It's supposed to serve the purpose of both parties that are involved in the contract. So for the employer to expect that the employee was going to uphold their end of the bargain without ever honoring the other side of things, I think this one kind of worked itself out exactly how it was meant to be. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.